All right. <clears throat> we are back. And this is the finished product right here of what we just got through doing. Drilling holes where they need to go. Got all our measurements like we needed. So the next thing to do is to mill the bottom piece and clamp it or the bottom piece which is our clamp for this particular uh, carriage stop. Well, I've already done that. I've already milled it out and even drilled the holes. So we're a step ahead. Now you're probably wondering how I lined all this stuff up. Well, I'll show you. Just quick and easy. We we'll use these little guys right here. These are transfer punches. They are fractional, letter, and number sized. You can buy three different sets of these things and they come in extremely handy. There's the set. I believe these are fractional. So, what I've done is I, this piece is half an inch from the top of this landing to the top of this landing right here or edge. This edge to this edge is half an inch. I want this bracket or this clamp to stick out 3 8 which is the depth of the way. These are little half moon keys. They're an eighth of an inch thick. So it's pretty simple. One, two, three block. We lay our keys right there. This is our block, our clamp, right up against there. This right up against that. Now you could clamp all this stuff down if you had a nice table to clamp it to. Then you would just take the transfer punch, put it down in this hole, smack it with a hammer. That would leave you a little center skirt, a little mark, a little center mark right there. Then just drill and tap. Now, if you don't have any way to clamp this, I suggest that you only do one hole at a time. Do one hole, put it together, put a bolt in it. Don't clamp it together, just good and snug so you can still move this to line it up. Then drop in your punch and hit it with a hammer. Don't have to hit it like you're driving a nail, just smack it. One good hit. Don't ever double hit them or double tap them. And you should be okay. Bore a inch and a quarter hole right here so it'll have the rotational piece so I can have three different positions. And here we are at the Atlas lathe. We're getting ready to bore a hole through our carriage stop for our spindle. I wanted to show you a little setup trick that I've learned and used over the years. I have a live center, a dead center, and our part. This is a independent four jaw chuck. So we put a little dot or a center punch mark right here. I got it lined up with the live center as best I could by eye. Then I take this dead center and I put the tip of the dead center in the little dot that I made or the little center mark and I put the other end in the live center. So this thing will basically wobble back and forth until you get this dot lined up in line with your tailstock. Now some of you older machinists know this trick. I think it works pretty well. I've used it a lot over the years. And just to show you, if I can get everything moved around here a little bit. Well, let me get a little bit better shot for you. Alright, I'm going to turn the lathe on and we'll see just how close we got it using this method. A 
Looks pretty good to me. It's a pretty good little method. I like using it. Okay, we're back in the shop getting ready to drill a one inch diameter hole through our carriage stop. I put the machine in back gears so we can drill a large diameter hole. That's a whole lot of drilling. All right, this is the first cut I'm going to make toward my inch and a quarter diameter. I'm going to film the first cut and probably the last cleanup cut. So all the stuff in between is just repetitive. So I'm going to take a cut of 20 thousandths.
Now we'll check it and see. Okay. I've measured this thing while it was on the lathe. And I went ahead and I put in a chamfer right here. 30 degrees because that's what the lathe was set at. It isn't anything special, but I wanted a chamfer there. And I also faced it on this side while it was in the machine. So I know that this face and this bore is perpendicular to each other. This one doesn't really matter, and neither do the other two sides. This one matters because this is what's going to be up against the machine, and plus the piece that goes inside of here will have a, a large step on it or a shoulder, a large shoulder on it, that will be knurled so I can turn it. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this again just to show you what it came out to. Using a telescoping gauge. Now for all of you that's never used one of these before or may not know exactly how, the way I was taught years ago when I was in school for this type of thing you start a little over center go ahead and snug that down one, one smooth motion to pull it across go from this side to this side in a smooth motion and if nobody's ever shown you how to hold a micrometer before this is how you hold one so you have full control of it So there's 250, 1, 2, almost a 3, so it's going to be around 9 like tenths. I want to talk to you a little bit about this piece. This is the rotary piece that's inside of the carriage stop that holds the three different positions, three different lengths of screws, which is basically all thread, about two inches in length. This is about an inch and a half in length from here to here. And I got a short little clip to help you maybe in the future cut all thread in a vise with a hacksaw. So I'll add that in. It's no big trick really, but you'll see. For all you guys out there, I know I've been machinist a long time or built projects, this is a little tip that some of you may or may not know. This is a piece of 5 16 18 all thread, and I put two blocks of wood in my vise. This bar is about even with the center of the jaws. Clamp it down and it'll hold the rod firmly in place and not damaging the threads. So I'm going to use my cordless saw, my beat up cordless saw, to cut this off. Just that easy, rod never moved. The holes are 5 16 18 all the way through, including this one in the rear. They are drilled and tapped three quarters of an inch into the head. I didn't want to drill and tap all the way through because there's no reason. As you can tell, this thing has very thin wall clearance right through here. That's actually where the larger size drill bit went in from the back side, a little bit too large, to chew out the threads and make more clearance on the inside. So 
the all thread wouldn't bind with that length of engagement. What I want to talk to you about is the actual pattern itself. I used a rotary table to drill and tap these holes. This is what I used to drill the holes in the spindle of the carriage stop. Palmgren rotary table on a small drill press. If you don't have a rotary table to drill and tap these holes in their proper sequence, which is 120 degrees apart, there is a way to do it on a drill press using cords. The cord length between the center of this bolt hole and the center of this bolt hole. Length of cords, 29th edition of the Machinery's Handbook, page 704. So the number of holes is three. So the diameter times point 866025 will give you the cord length. To mock this up, I have a center punch mark on this material, and I'm going to scribe a line in a circle from this punch mark. So there is our bolt circle. That is where the centers of these bolts will be located. So the next thing we have to do is actually put one punch mark anywhere along this circle that you want. It doesn't have to be any special location. All the special locations will come later for the detents. So let's do that. So there's our little punch mark. That's where our first hole is going to be, is right there. So our cord length, so our cord length is one inch, three hundred sixty-seven thousandths, one tenth. So we set our caliper to that. got one end of the caliper jaw, one end of the caliper jaw is in this punch mark we just made, and since all the distances are the same, we can scribe, scribe, so now how we, where these two lines cross, will be our next two punch marks. Focus in on that. So now we have one, two, three punch marks, and they are all the same distance from each other. So now you can actually take this to a drill press, put a center point or a center drill in each one of these to get them started, drill your holes and tap your holes to depth as needed. So that's one way you can do this if you don't have a milling machine or a rotary table, either one.